Okay, here we go. We're going to explore some more techniques of finding derivatives today. In this first section, I'm just going to kind of formalize, or this first uh, uh, flip chart, I'm going to formalize uh, some of the things that we talked about in our last video in terms of our power rule and then polynomial functions and constants and all that stuff. So uh, this first one says that if you find the derivative of a constant, that derivative is going to be uh, 0. The second one says if you find the derivative of the line, it's simply the slope of the line, m. This is the power rule. Find the derivative of x to the n power. Bring n down. Reduce the power by 1. This one says that if you have a constant times f of x, that I can pull that constant out front and find the derivative of f of x. And these last two, uh, something you probably have done intuitively, but it just says you can find the derivative of a polynomial function. These are if you're added together or, or subtracted from each other, I can find the derivative of each one individually. So just some formalization of uh, some things you probably already, some common sense things you already knew. So if I go to find this derivative in my first example, I find this derivative of this polynomial function, f prime of x is going to be 8x cubed minus 15x squared plus 2x minus 4, and then that one is 0. That's it. Easy as that. Polynomial function, adding them and subtracting them, I can go ahead and just find the derivative of each one individually. Now. In the next couple of, of rules that I'm going to give you, and I'll do examples of each one, these are going to be quotient rule and product rule and reciprocal rule, and I'll do an example of each one. These are different rules of different ways of, of finding derivatives of things when they're multiplied together, divided, and so on and so forth. Sometimes uh, it will be easier to simplify it. Sometimes it's sometimes not possible to simplify it, um, and we're going to build on these concepts. And you really just have a, you have to have a an understanding of this. You have to memorize these rules. Uh, if you don't memorize these rules, uh, it's really going to be a long semester for you. So you just got to, you have to know this stuff. So if you're taking the derivative of two functions multiplied together, I can take, what, the way I do it is I take the first function times the derivative of the second one plus the second function times the derivative of the first one. It doesn't matter, because you're adding them together, it doesn't matter which one you do first. I usually say, oh, find the derivative of the first one times the second one plus the derivative of the second one times the first one. It, it doesn't make any difference, but you have to have this technique down. Okay. Um, anyways, so here we go. Let me do a couple of examples of that. You could multiply this out. You could multiply this binomial times this trinomial and then find a derivative. Um, I think that's harder. I, I would go ahead and when I find the derivative, this I would treat as f of x, this I would treat as g of x. The derivative of this is 3x squared, and then multiply times g of x, which is 2x squared plus 8x minus 5, plus the derivative of this is going to be 4x plus 8 times x cubed plus 1. So it's the derivative of the first function times the second function plus the derivative of the second function times the first function. And now, <laughs> algebraically, simplify it out. Distribute, I get 6x to the fourth plus 24x cubed minus 15x squared foil plus 4x to the fourth. Uh, my outsides are plus 4x. My insides are plus 8x cubed plus 8. Combine all your like terms, 6x to the 4th, 4x to the 4th, I get 10x to the 4th. 24x cubed, 8x cubed is 32x cubed. Uh, uh, 15, negative 15x squared, and that's it. It's negative 15x squared. Uh, plus 4x plus 8. You're going to ask me, a lot of people are going to ask me, do I have to simplify it? And the answer is yes. First of all, when we get to the end of this unit, um, I will give you a test, and half of the test is going to be multiple choice, and I will always simplify my answers this way. Secondly, um, in the second part of this, uh, when I apply the derivative in my next, uh, in my next unit in those videos, um, we're going to have to solve our derivatives, set them equal to zero, and solve them. And to do that, you have to simplify it. So yes, you have to simplify. The algebra is going to be the killer, the derivative not so much, not so hard. Let's look at another example. Let's do one with a fractional exponent, make it a little harder, multiply it out. Um, in all honesty, in all honesty, I wouldn't use product rule here. I would distribute x to the one third and then take the derivative. It, it just would be easier. Um, I'm going to start to simplify it, but let's do that. f of x equals, it's going to be x to the seven thirds 
minus uh, that's six uh, minus three x to the four thirds plus two x to the one third. If you want a little bit of a challenge, then go instead of doing it this way, go ahead and um, do your derivative or find your derivative um, by using product rule, and we can you know we can look at that in class tomorrow and see if you did it correctly. This derivative is going to be seven thirds x to the four thirds. This one's going to be minus um, what is it four x to the one third. Four thirds times three is four third is four, and this one's going to be minus um, it's going to be uh, two thirds x to the negative two thirds, and that's going to put that one down in the bottom. So really, this is two over three x to the two thirds. I, I show you that because um, what I need to do is I need to put this all over three x to the two thirds. Um, to find the points where I have horizontal and vertical tangent lines. So um, if I write it as everything over f prime of x over 3x to the 2 thirds, that's my common denominator. I have to multiply this by x to the 2 thirds, so it's going to be what, 7x squared? I have to multiply this by 3x to the 2 thirds, so it's minus 12x, and then this one just uh, is minus 2. And I do that because, again, like I said, you have to simplify all this stuff, all that algebra simplifying. That's the hard part. Um, I do this because I, that, to answer the second part here, to know where I have horizontal and vertical tangent lines. Um, actually, the easier one is vertical tangent lines in this case. You're going to have horizontal tangent lines where the derivative is equal to 0. Well, that's the numerator being equal to 0. Well, if I set that numerator equal to 0, uh, it doesn't factor. So if it doesn't factor, this has to be on part of a multi I mean a, a, a calculator part of your test. What I do is I just graph that and I get the zeros. I did that and I found that I have horizontal tangent lines at x equals 1.527 and 0.187. This is where I have horizontal tangent lines. I have vertical tangent lines where this derivative is not defined. This derivative is not defined where, the where I have division by 0. I have division by 0 where the denominator is 0, which is at 0. So at x equals 0. That's where I have a vertical tangent line. So a little product rule. If you want to try to get this derivative by using product rule, you'll get the same place when you simplify it. Try it. See if you can do it. We can look at it in class tomorrow if you want. Our next rule is quotient rule. Our quotient rule is when I have two equations that are divided by each other. When I have two equations divided by each other, if I want to find the derivative of f of x divided by g of x, it is the derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus the derivative of the denominator times the numerator over the denominator squared. This is a rule that you can't, if, sometimes, sometimes you can divide it out, but most of the time you cannot. Um, what, what ends up happening is that what ends up happening is that if I can simplify this, I always should try to simplify it. A good rule of thumb for, for those of you who are trying to work on this, if g of x is a monomial, I always want to simplify. You'll see me do that over and over again. In this case, I just want to find the derivative. I have two polynomial functions, a trinomial and a binomial. So y prime is, or dy dx, the way I wrote it in this notation. Okay, The derivative of the numerator is going to be 6x minus 1 times the denominator, which is 4x squared plus 5 minus the derivative of the denominator is 8x times 3x squared minus x plus 2 over 4x squared plus 5 squared. Um, simplify this. Again, it's the simplifying that kills people. It's 24x cubed plus 30x minus 4x squared minus 5 um, minus 24x cubed plus 64x minus 16. Oh, I messed up something here. This should be what? That's not, that's not 8. What the heck am I doing? That's not 8, and that's not 64. Try that again. Okay. This should be x. Man. Minus 8x, so it's going to be 
plus 8x squared and then minus 16x. Sorry about that. All over your denominator. 4x squared plus 5 squared. And then go ahead. These, these cancel. That works out. Boom, boom. Um, I have 4x squared, minus 4x squared, 8x squared, so that's a 4x squared. Um, I have a 30x minus 16x, so that is going to be plus 14x. And then I have a minus 5. This doesn't usually factor and cancel or anything like that, but you got to clean it up, so if I want to know horizontal tangent lines or vertical tangent lines, you can go ahead and solve it. The next rule that we have are reciprocal rules, and this is if you have a constant on top, anything other than a, a, a variable expression, say we just have a 1 or a 2 or a 7 or a 5. I can simplify this because it's just the second part of um, it's just the second part of, of our quotient rule. What ends up happening is it's negative, and then the derivative of the denominator over the denominator squared. You don't have a numerator. You don't have a derivative of a numerator because it's a constant. And if I take the derivative of that constant, it just becomes zero, and then all that part drops out. Um, a lot of books, a lot of places, a lot of AP review manuals, stuff like that, they will not present reciprocal rule. This is simply convenience. You can always figure it out by using quotient rule if you wanted to do it that way. So I'd do an example for you. Find dy dx. dy dx is the derivative. That 3 is a constant. I can pull it out front, so it's 3 times. Uh, it's going to be negative. The derivative of the denominator is 2x plus 2 over x squared plus 2x squared. And you might see the 3 distributed. It might write it as negative 6x plus 6 over x squared plus 2x squared. Yeah, that's really all you can do. Nothing big there. So it's a matter of knowing these rules and being able to apply them, simplify it down algebraically. The algebraic simplifying is really the most hardest part, or the hardest part. Most hardest? That's, that's terrible language. It is the most difficult part. Good luck. I hope that you uh, have success on this assignment, and we'll clarify some more in class and, and keep it going.